All right, guys, your writing lesson this week is something, this is a short video that I want you to watch first, and then you could either try to just get through this all in one day, or you could maybe even spend like 15 minutes every day just doing a little bit more research. It's however you want to organize your week, uh, but I do want to show you what you need to have out and then what you are going to have as a goal for the end of the week. Don't feel like you need to have any of this out right now. First, you can just sort of watch the video to see what it is you're supposed to do this week, okay? So, every day you're doing writing or whenever you're going to work on it, you need to have out your pencil and your journal. And um, don't forget to get out that pink reference sheet. That's going to be helpful. And then also you'll need to have some note cards and a computer as well. And here's kind of our goal by the end of the week. We are going to need to start organizing our thoughts. So first we need to have those thoughts. So your goal is to have 10 or more note cards for each of your research questions, and you need to have at least two research sites, if not more. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. So this is the work that we had done together before all of this craziness, and I had been showing you along the way the country that I wanted to study, and then also what the questions were that I wanted to get to know more about my country. And I chose four questions. First of all was what animals are found in Australia? I also wanted to know who the native people of Australia were. I also wanted to know what school it was like in Australia, and then also what sports they like to play there. Now, the things that I have underneath are something, another lesson that we had done, which was basically to help you come up with research queries. And what that means is when you go to type, to search for something, rather than typing out what animals are found in Australia in the search bar, this could kind of help summarize that information for you. So, for example, in question one, Australian animals would be what I am talking about. And so I would write down, I would just search for Australian animals in the search bar. Okay, so again, my big ones that I'm looking for are animals found in Australia, native people, uh, what school is like, and what sports they play. So that's important for me to know. That's why you needed to have out your journal. You should for sure have three as a minimum um, different questions that you're wanting to find out about your country. So now on this next page, uh, Mrs. Headland is a rock star and was able to get for us uh, ProQuest login information. Don't feel like you have to memorize this or write it down. It's going to be on that links page that I send out to you guys today. And um, this is simply just the pathway for you. So in order to reach databases, these ProQuest databases, which is a great place to search, you're going to go to Hello ID. And then you're going to want to click on databases. And then you're going to log in. I will show you that in just a minute. Uh, but these are the big sites that you're going to want to uh, stick with. There are six sites total there, but SIRS, ProQuest, and Culturegrams are all kind of the best for a country report. And again, I'll show you that in a little bit more detail in just a sec. So this is citations page is something you're going to want to have nearby. I just want to try to remind you of what we had talked about in class. Um, all you need to have is basically the name of your article and the site that you got it from. So the very first one that I had shown you actually came from SIRS Discoverer. So I circled that on my pink sheet, and then I wrote down the name or the title of that article that I pulled from, which was called Awesome Australia Animals. Okay, so for to me, for me today, the one that I show you, let's say that I chose ProQuest, I would circle ProQuest, and then down here I'm going to write down the title. And the reason that this is important is because now every uh, research item that I come up with from this website, I'm going to write a one on my uh note card, which will make life way easier later on. I know exactly which site that came from. So just to show you real quick, these are examples of note cards. You'll see that I have a big fat two up there in the top left corner. That would help me know that all these note cards came from this particular topic. And then finally, uh, actually, I'm not going to show you that one yet. <laughs> and now I'm going to pull up the internet and show you kind of how I would get there. So first you're going to need to get to your Hello ID, log in like normal, and remember my teacher one's way different than yours, but this is what you're going to come up with is all of your different links, and ProQuest looks like this one. So you're going to click on ProQuest, and then it's going to basically tell you that you can't, you don't have access to it yet. So the pass or the username, excuse me, is just our school name, Cathcart, but it has to be all lowercase. And then the password is also lowercase. It's the word welcome, W-E-L-C-O-M-E. 
and then it also needs a number one. So once you have that, you'll hit submit. Maybe. You'll hit submit. <laughs> and this should look really familiar to you. We had used these a little bit in class, and this is just reminders, or this is just uh, the page where you get to pick which site you want to do your research on. So like I told you in that first part of the, the video, ProQuest is going to be a good place to go to. SIRS Discoverer is going to be a great place to go to. And then so is Culturegrams. That doesn't mean eLibrary and History Study and ProQuest down here aren't good. They just aren't necessarily as helpful for a research project on a country report. Okay, So I'm going to show you Culturegrams first. Uh, Culturegrams is really awesome. However, it's a little bit more like an overview of your entire country. It's a lot harder to find specific examples because you can't search the same way. So let me tell you what I mean. Don't pick Kids Edition. Go to World Edition because you're fourth and fifth graders. And then you can tell I've already tried this out. I tried to search for Australian animals because that's my first topic. And it basically just sent me to the Australia page because you can't really search for specific items about your country. You can just search for a country. So let's say that I oh, let's say that I click on Australia, and I'm gonna obviously go to the Australia page. Now, oops, there is a ton of awesome information on here. It's just that rather than searching throughout this site, you instead have this sort of table of contents off to the left here, and this table of contents off to the left is a great place to start. So for me, I was looking for animals, and I actually scoured this thing earlier today, and I couldn't really find anything specifically about animals. But another thing that I really wanted to know about was about uh, sort of the Aboriginal people of Australia, and that could actually send me to this section right here called the people and as well as the sort of the history of Australia. So this page is still super, super helpful. The only bummer is that you can't necessarily search specifically for one thing that you want. But let's say, as an example, you really want to know about the housing of the country that you're living in. You want to know what houses are like for people in Australia. Th this website is going to be awesome, and you'll have lots to find there. Okay, so there's Culturegrams. And then ProQuest and SIRS are pretty much identical. They b basically are a place where you can search for exactly what it is you're looking for. And so here, I'm going to type in Australian oops, if I can spell correctly, Australian animals, because that's kind of what I'm really focusing on today. Now, you have, as you can see over here, 282,690 results. That is a lot, <clears throat> but you have to be careful. You can't just click on the first one. You really need to click on their bio, or you need to read through their bios to see which one is going to be the best to click on. So, for instance, this one says provision of venue hire for, well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Australian frogs and reptiles, Australian rainforest animals, Australian wildlife. That one might be really good. Australian animals, giant Australian cuttlefish. That sounds like it could be pretty good. Um, Australian companion animals survey of Australian pet owners. I don't want to know pets. I want to just know uh, you know, sort of unique or interesting animals about Australia. Uh, here, oh, this is cool. Kangaroo and other Australian animals dazzle the eyes of elementary school students. But again, that seems kind of more specific rather than just a video or a, excuse me, an article about Australian animals. Okay, so there's an example of ProQuest. I'm going to go back to my, the one that I, that's the main page, and I'm going to finally click on SIRS. So I'm going to send you to SIRS as well. And this is the one that I like the best, but again, all three that I showed you are totally great. And I am going to, if this ever loads, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to type in Australian animals. And this is the first one I had already done with you. So I can't use that one as an example because I already did it, although it was a great article and I got a ton of information from that one. I actually got, I think, 15 different note cards just for Australian animals from that site alone. So I could have been done, but I want to have a little bit more. And so I'm going to look through more. Critter card cutouts. Australia is home to some of the world's most amazing animals. Go down under and meet three of them. Oh, I don't have anything about Tasmanian devils or bandicoots. So I might choose that one. Uh, bats drop dead in Australian heat. Sad, but not what I want to know about. Um... The lungfish, no, that doesn't sound quite as interesting. I'm actually just going to go ahead and click on this critter card cutouts. 
So now that I'm on this site, I first need to go to my research page and I am going to, this is obviously card number one because I haven't done anything else, and I am on SIRS. So I would have circled SIRS Discoverer. And again, if I look back at the article, this article is called Critter Card Cutouts. So then on my piece of paper, I would write down here, Critter Card Cutouts. I'm not gonna do that though. <laughs> you guys get the picture. So now when I read through this, Australia is home to some of the mo world's most amazing animals. Go down under and meet three of them. Check out that guy. Elliot kind of looks just like him. <laughs> um, so my job is to read this and I have to remember I am going to make life so much easier for myself if I simply try to reword this on my own in my own words. So for example, once common in Australia, Tasmanian devils are now found only on an island off the country's southern coast. Scientists think that dingoes, wild dogs not native to Australia, wiped them out on the mainland. Tasmanian devils have extremely powerful jaws. They can crunch through bones, holy cow, but despite their tough name, these little devils would rather eat other animals' leftovers than hunt their own prey. So I, I automatically think that I could probably do two or three note cards and here's what I'm thinking. I'm just going to think out loud. I'm not going to write it down for you guys, uh, but I'm just going to think through this. So the very first thing that I notice is they're not really technically on Aust and on Australia's, you know, land anymore. They're instead on a su southern coast. So maybe what I could do is my first note card could say Tasmanian devils used to be in Australia, but they're now found in an island south of Australia. Do you see how that's information from this first sentence? But I didn't necessarily say it word for word, okay? Another thing that I think I could say is that uh, Tasmanian devils have extremely powerful jaws. Okay, how could I say that? I could say something like um, Tasmanian devils uh, are really strong. Uh, or maybe I could say Tasmanian devils have really strong jaws. Similar, but not the same. And then it says they can crunch through bones. Maybe I could add that on there. Tasmanian devil's jaws are so strong, they can crunch, they can bite through bone. Perfect. Okay. So that would be something I would write on my note card. Tasmanian devil's jaws are so strong, they can bite through bone. Different, but similar to what I just read there. And then the last one, despite their tough name, these t little devils would rather eat other animals' leftovers. So maybe I could say something like, even though they can bite through bone, we don't have to worry. They'd rather eat leftovers. Something like that, okay? So again, I'm going to go back to my little presentation here. Your job today is to try and write 10 plus note cards for each of your research questions. I think you should have more, but that's just me. And then you want to try to at least get through two research sites. So, so far I've only used SIRS Discoverer twice, so I might want to try to come up with another one. Although technically I do have two separate articles, so I've already met my requirement there. Okay, just a heads up for you guys to see what it is we're going to be doing next week. We are going to take all of our note cards and we're going to start to organize them. We're going to say, how do these all flow together? How can I take these note cards and turn them into paragraphs, and we're going to really decide, do I need to do more research or do I feel like I'm done? Okay, so uh, check out SIRS, or nope, sorry, check out ProQuest databases, finish up your research, and that way when we do our video next week, we can really start to organize our information. Log into a Zoom call if you have any questions, but otherwise, get to reading.